What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Today, I woke up, China banned Bitcoin, okay? This happens every six months, nothing to fear. It's actually a buying opportunity because look what they've done to the market who somehow moves when China bans Bitcoin. Uh, which is kind of suspect because I know for sure that no retail person is seeing that that China bans Bitcoin and dumping all their stuff. OK, so we're going to get straight into it. Make sure that you smash the like button. This is what we're rolling with today. Also, make sure you subscribe. We're going to do a big giveaway at like 60K subscribers. So definitely subscribe. Turn the post notifications on. And this is what we're looking like. OK, we've dipped below 1.9 trillion i was very wrong i thought we were going to stay above 2 trillion it was very wrong i did i couldn't have predicted china to drop uh st stupid fud right this is a stupid fud and we're gonna we're gonna look at it but this is what we're looking like let's see the biggest gainer i think it was ren ren is up 25 percent, and there's a couple others there's only one two three four five coins in the green today uh from the top 100 so if we check out quant, we're at 317 right here. By the way, at the end, or, or what we have in store for this video, we're gonna defuse all the China FUD, okay? We're gonna talk about XDC with some big stuff coming. We're gonna talk about Hedera, XRP, and I'm gonna expose the SEC and call them idiots, okay? Quant 318, right? Quant 318, is this a buying opportunity? No, you should have bought right here. You should have bought in here when it dipped below 300 okay right here you had a long time you had a couple days where you could have picked it up below uh 300 if you wanted to get into quant right that's expensive dude i was buying this thing for 40 bucks 28 bucks was my lowest buy um now this is literally like some people only have 300 to put into crypto so buying one quant is like a big you know that's that's expensive now um, but if you have just one quant, I would hold it like your Bitcoin. Like that's your Bitcoin. Hopefully one day it's worth like 10,000, 15,000. That'd be nice. Free car or something <laughs> just for holding a digital asset. Who cares? Uh, Hedera Hashgraph, 34 cents standard stuff. Okay. Nothing really crazy happening here. Vector space still blowing my mind, holding above $10. I thought this would have, uh, came crashing down already just off uh, people thinking it's a pump coin which it's not a pump coin i'm still holding a lot of this i have not sold a drop of it we've got constellation same price still very undervalued still one of the best buys on this market you want to know a, another buy that's amazing right now oh yeah an energy web token i almost bought this this coin live on stream on TikTok. i almost did it but i couldn't decide to sell my cro I could sell my CRO and get in here. This is a great buy. No financial advice. Full transparency. I'm not in energy web token, but this is one that I would be buying in a bear market. It has many. It has one connection to Ripple and it's an energy token, dude. Any of any, any of the green energy, we know the agenda, right? It's green energy. It's carbon, blah, blah, blah. So we know it's up 93 cents on XRP. Kind of crazy right here. Uh, look at that big fall right there. Seven day chart. Look at this T from the 24th. Boom. That thing was hit by, I guess that was the China FUD. 1.30 AM. Yeah, that was the China FUD that hit that. Wow. It's pretty crazy. All right. Let's talk about the China FUD. Okay. So right here, September 24th, log it in your history books. China's top regulators ban crypto trading and mining Bitcoin tumbles. So I'm not even going to read like I can't read. They, they gave me my article limit on Reuters, right? But I don't need to read what happened. This is the same BS that they put out every single six months. It's horrendous. Okay, it is horrendous. And I'm going to show you what it does to the chart. Hold on. We have Senator Pat Toomey right here saying China's authoritarian uh, crackdown on crypto, including Bitcoin, is a big opportunity for the U.S., 
it's also a reminder of our huge structural advantage over the uh, over China. Yeah, but guess what? Uh, USA doesn't even uh, leap at that opportunity. It doesn't even leap at this opportunity. It just lets China do whatever, right? I saw an uh, article f and saying that the Federal Reserve is actually watching what happens with the, with the digital yuan, you know, in China. They're watching how that rollout happens. And they're so basically they let China be the guinea pig of that, right? They're watching how the social credit score, they're watching. And, and they're going to they're gonna put that in place. And we're going to talk more about that as time moves on, right? Also, another insight from Wu Blockchain on this situation. China's severe crackdown policy will continue to cause the entire Bitcoin mining industry to move into the United States. Exchanges and other crypto institutions will migrate to Singapore. So this is a very good insight right here. Uh, moving into the United States, the Bitcoin mining industry. So do we think, do we think that Bitcoin or China views Bitcoin as actually a competitor to the digital yuan or what? Do they view it as a competitor and they actually want to move it to the USA and just drop that, that steaming pile of garbage that Bitcoin is? <laughs> I loved saying that. Do they want to just drop that onto the USA? Who knows, dude? Like, like it seems like they don't care about... Like, they're technically the biggest importer and exporter. If you look at Bitcoin as gold, they have the most mining being done there, right? They have the most, bi they have the most digital gold mining being done there. And they're trying to get it out of their place. They're out of their country. They're trying to ban it. But we know the bans are BS. And watch this, okay? Lil Moon Lambo right here. China banning Bitcoin is literally a bullish event. Let's check it out. The history of China banning Bitcoin. Okay. They banned it on this date right here. Okay. That's December 5, 2013. So a long time ago. Bitcoin price was uh, 1,153. The move since then has been 3,600%. So the point of this this chart right here is to show you that every time they ban it, it actually does nothing to the price action. It is doing something to the psychology and the sentiment and what people think in China of Bitcoin and what people think here of Bitcoin. Because this, this headline will make it onto mainstream news and then all the normies, I think that's what you call them, all like the people who just watch mainstream news will have a bad... They're trying to give Bitcoin a terrible reputation of being banned, right? And, and why would the whole world trust a, a creation with an anonymous creator who holds a ton of Bitcoin? That sounds like a rug pull. <laughs> Just being honest, someone like someone like my grandfather would not trust some some things like Bitcoin. He would not. He would simply say, "Why isn't the creator like doxed?" Like, why, well, who, who made this? What if it's a scam? Who made this? They'll never trust it on a global scale. And that's one of the various reasons why it will not be used <clears throat> as a global anything. But there's a, mis there's a misunderstanding there. Bitcoin is already global. It's, it's borderless. It's already a global currency, right? It's already. But I'm just saying it will not build the new financial system that will exist in its own ecosystem forever. Okay. So let's look at the last one, right? Let's focus on the last one. When did they last ban Bitcoin? Okay, it was four months ago. Uh, this is uh, May 21 of 2021. Okay, May 2021, right there. So we look at the article, let's go and find it. This is from May 18, 2021. So even this date on here is wrong, actually. That date is wrong. May 18, 2021, this dropped on Reuters, and I can assume that the next day, May 19, is when it really got whipping up the news. It usually takes a day, or, or like, it usually takes like 12 hours for that news to circulate and have an effect. Um, but sometimes, it, immediately, it does have an effect, but the full breadth of that that punch that they give, they punch the, industry, they punch the market, it usually takes a while. Now, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Okay, right here we see this is September 6 or September 7. We have this huge red candle, right? We opened the day at 52,719. 52, we closed in the 46,000s, okay? And we continued. We bounced up a little bit right here.
But then just yes, or, or just on September 20, when there was no China FUD, keep in mind, no China FUD here, right? The China FUD has entered the, the, the China FUD energy has entered right now. As we can see, look, they always do this. And here's the other one. I've circled it. Here's the other one. They always do this when the market has already dumped, right? They, they do it on top of the dump. They kick the industry while it's down every time. Look, here's the last one. We had huge green or huge red candles coming down here, right? Almost the same thing. We open at 56 up in the 50,000s and we close in 40s and we just keep going. Look, dump, 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 dump all the way down right here. We even got as low as, um, oh, sorry, that's after the news. So the China FUD that came out last time was May 18. Look what they did. Look what these idiots did, right? The, the, the market's already dumping. <clears throat> it's almost like people know. <clears throat> Sorry for the coughing. It, it's almost like people know. There's a group of people who know, like whales, who exit up here. Like they exit here. And they know it's coming. Right? And then the whole market dumps. Look at this. Boom, boom. Here's the news. So May 18, we're at 43,000. And boom, followed by a, a huge dump the other day. And then basically... Uh, we just stayed, we just kept going down, essentially. Like, we ended up in June at 30,000. Then we head back up, and now they're doing it again. And you can see the red candles before they did that. Like, come on, dude, what are they doing? This is, like, weird stuff going on. It's weird to me. It's manipulation. And it's it's complete FUD. It's complete FUD. Nothing's going to come from China banning. Okay. XRP Ledger. They granted, they granted uh, 25 projects... 10 million i think it was no 25 projects from 10 different countries two million dollars plus here's the grantees some of the most important ones are xpay this is like a grants program xpay allows users to send and receive xrp with iMessage. it makes it easy to join and participate in crypto by hiding the complexities of blockchain enabling user-friendly xrp payments Holy cow, I would be sending a lot of XRP payments through iMessage. That is a dope idea. They gave them 25000 Also, we have Minecraft. Zerpcraft is bringing the XRP ledger technology to Minecraft. Okay? To Minecraft. This is insane. Like, this is some good stuff. This is minting NFTs. So there was a ton. If you look through all of these grants, there was a ton of NFT stuff. Like, a ton of NFT stuff. We've also got some carbon credit NFT stuff. It is just very, very dope right here. Very dope. Moving on. Andre Kosterman. Three days from now is Monday 27th, right? This guy's from Zinfin with a major trade finance initiative proof point. So what is a proof point? A proof point is a point in time, basically, that proves that they are who they say they are, right? Like it's a proof point. Like proof of that we're doing something uh then we have the user meeting for tfd initiative members on the 28th so big things are coming up for zinfin right big things um and who what's the trade finance initiative again let's remind ourselves let's remind ourselves what the trade fi finance initiative is this is massive right here right we have a bunch of banks we have xdc network as the newest member right here Right there, you can see it. And who do we have? Let's remind ourselves as this of this amazing connection that I didn't see anybody else make between Zinfin and Hedera Hashgraph. Trade Finance Initiative, right? Boom. Standard Chartered Bank or Standard Bank of Africa. Santander. Santander we know is connected to Ripple. If we go here, this is the Standard Bank um, of Africa. Standard Bank of Africa. Who is this? Who is where is the Standard Bank of Africa? Guess what? They are on the governing council of Hedera right here. Standard Bank right there. So there is a network. I'm telling you, it's a web of companies that is coming up, rising from the surface. That is the first ever connection I've seen between Hedera Hashgraph and Zinfin right there. They're both. Look at that. Zinfin, Standard Bank. Boom. Easy connection to make. And apparently there's a proof point coming a major TFD initiative proof point. So something from this consortium of people or, or banks and, and institutions and companies. 
Last thing we're going to cover, SEC was the only regulator unwilling to meet with Coinbase. Now, guess what? I personally believe that this article is backwards. This headline is backwards. I think that the SEC, or I think that Coinbase was the only exchange that the SEC was willing to meet with. I think it's backwards. I think they're in cahoots. They're in cahoots for sure. SEC and Coinbase are working together to position uh, the like to to bring us into the next age of crypto. That's what they're doing, and that involves positioning themselves against each other so that they can move us to a specific point in time in crypto. You'll see. You'll see. Right. But that is all we've got. I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you for watching every single day. Make sure you uh, follow on Twitter, Instagram, join the Crypto Night Discord. It is free, 40,000 members. You don't have to get premium if you don't want to. Premium gives you access to my newest portfolio updates pretty frequently. Whenever I make a change in my portfolio, it goes on there. Um, and all my trade positions, if I ever take any. And um, yeah, appreciate you all and goodbye. Oh, dear.